again and welcome to Man's Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. Hi guys, I'm Carla Garrick. And almost May. It is 420 just passed. That's like but oh. then like half the year is um, gone. <laughs> then it's Port so Fest it's 20, and then it's the it's, end of the year. <laughs> it's the 24th of April. Um I did write down some things because I was like, holy cow, and usually we just wrap these up on the end of the show, but uh, um so next Thursday, so we tape on today's Wednesday, right? Yeah, we tape on Wednesday. Um, next Thursday, May 2nd, is the taco tour. Yes. I was like, holy cow, when did that happen? Inflation, folks. When I moved to New Hampshire, those tacos were a dollar. Yeah, they are three. now three dollars. So yeah, the taco tour. Thank Biden economics is, and Trump economics. Is um, Thursday, May 2nd, uh, 4 to 8 p.m., um, downtown Manchester. There are 60 plus restaurants involved. Um, tacos, as you said, are three dollars. So like, you just walk from place to place. It's thousands of people, so be prepared for that. Um, they will close Elm Street um, on the second from at noon. So don't park on Elm Street or any of the little side streets going to Chestnut. So Lake will still be open. Um, Elm Street, Granite to Bridge will be closed, and then all the Lowell and all those little right. ones to Chestnut are also closed. So if you're parked there at noon on Friday, you might get towed. So don't do that. Yeah, That's the thing. just don't do that. I mean, um, it's it's actually interestingly, shockingly popular, yes. and like we'll back That's up the I'm highway. Yes, in, like so it is thousands and thousands and and of people walking around to buy these tacos. I I I don't go. Cause I went years ago, like when it was a dollar, um, <laughs> and they did emphasize bring cash. Yes, it's a cash it's a only cash event. thing. Um, so Probably that, also a result of the <laughs> economic um, they, situation. Um, it was interesting, you know, like I did go to the website, I was gonna, th there's other things going on at the same time. Different businesses have music, you know, different places have different it's things. It's a fun vibe. So it is a good thing. So if, you're look, if you do the taco tour, that is a week from tomorrow. Um, this weekend, Saturday. Saturday is the Friends of Piscataqua River Park annual, our big cleanup for the year, the spring cleanup. Um, that is this Saturday, April 27th from 9 in the morning till 1. Um, lunch is provided, coffee's provided, tools, training, all that stuff. Basically, there's a lot involved. Cleaning up trash, which we put a dent on, but I mean, it is like a hundred acre park. It you is know, a very large park. Well, and I pick up trash twice a week Yeah, Yeah, but that's what I mean. But then you go off into the woods and right. there's still trash. <laughs> and no, it's hard to stay ahead of it. No, it is so my point, the, right? I mean, the pathways and everything are pretty clean, um, but that doesn't mean there's not, you know, a tire yeah. up on the hill or whatever. Yep. And then there's um, gapping and weed. There's, you know, invasive weeds that we have to contain. Um, so that goes on. We it, it, It'll probably be a pretty good turnout. We've been having some pretty big turnouts for our cleanups. Yeah, it was nice to see. Actually, I was down at the Piscataway River Park on your side of yeah, the river, yeah. and uh, they had, oh, no, it was actually, it was on the West Side Arena side at the entrance there. They had all the different organizations yeah. that are oh, working nice. on the park well, up. I, and, it, I you know, know it was nice. A, um, so on the, on the West Side Arena side, there is a marquee, you know, a trailhead that's kind of in the, bushes, you know, it's a little in, um, that leads to, oh, excuse me, leads to the trail that would go in and go over to my side of the river. Um, then up the, up the road a bit is the boat launch. So apparently EPD, which is environmental, um, I don't know, something protection, it, the, the water sewer people, the water people, <laughs> they are doing something with the boat ramp. I've just kind of like browsed through emails and I was like, ah, wait and heck. Um, so they, um, somebody from Urban Ponds, because that's like another entity that deals with ponds in the city, so like Nut Pond or whatever. They are, um, Urban Ponds maintains a bunch of the trailhead markers, which I didn't know, including the one on your, on the West Side Arena of our trail. So we're like, wait, is the boat launch in the park? And wait, what's, we're trying to figure out our, our So boundaries. if you're curious, you guys can come on Saturday and see what that's about. Yep. Also on Saturday, there is Pine Tree Riot. Yep. Uh, AFP, so Americans for Prosperity, is putting together, I think it's probably their fourth or fifth oh, or a, sixth or whatever yeah, annual one. This one is uh, not the one that is done at the warehouse, but at the Kalugians. It is in Ware, which yeah. of course is where the Pine Tree Riot okay. started. Yeah. Um, and you could probably get more information uh, on the AFP, AFP yeah. New um, Hampshire website. I also noticed that this Saturday, or again, Urban Ponds, when I went looking to see something about Urban Ponds, they're doing a cleanup at Wolf Park, 
It says me at the boat launch. And I was like, boat launch? Is there a boat launch in Wolf Park? I don't, I don't know where Wolf, Wolf Park, Park is. Wolf Park is one near Dairy Queen. Oh. So I was like, I don't really understand. I'm, I'm thinking there's more in Wolf Park than I'm aware of. Anyways, that one's also this Saturday, 9 to 11. And then next Saturday, the 4th, um, Urban Ponds are doing a cleanup at Black Brook in Blodgett Park, which is on Front Street in Dunbarton Road. So that's kind of a nice, that's a nice little park that shouldn't get overlooked either. Um, also had a dam hmm. involved in that. Um, but so there's lots of things in the community that people can be doing now that spring is here and, you know. Um, and honestly, if you're looking for something to do, just cast your eye around your mm. street yeah. and go, does this look like right. kind of we live in a garbage town? Yep. If so, pick up a garbage bag, go out and just pick up the litter yep. on your yeah, street. There's a, um, because it, I don't know if it's this time of year when the snow melts or if it's because of the garbage trucks or whatever. But you know, as someone who actually picks up a fair amount of more. litter, maybe I notice it more, yeah. but honestly, like I was driving down to here and yeah, I was like, just like, what is, like, up, with that? What is like, up with that? What is up with that? Um, and, and it's actually, I think it is indicative of social malaise, right? Yep. Like that sounds no. melodramatic, but it's sort of like, I remember being in India in Goa back in the day, right? Like 2001, 2002. And the, the structure at that time was all these Brits would work construction in England and then take six months off and go to India and just lounge about, so <laughs> to say. And uh, it was, it blew my mind. I watched this English guy who, you know, has a, a, a oh, house no, no, in right. England, whatever, like, you know, understands sort of stuff now there's a lot of litter in india i did not see one trash can anywhere except in one town called hyderabad and that was because clinton went there for a state visit and they were like oh we need to clean up the trash this doesn't look good so this british guy would literally just like just drink his water bottle and then like throw it out the car or throw it off yeah. the donkey or whatever and i was like what are you doing and he's like that's how they live here and i was like that's not how no. you should live. Right. Why are you well, doing that? Well, I think that? that when I came, I did notice that uh, Granite Street seems to be pretty clean. So they've come by with the street cleaners and whatnot. Um, but it does, like, it's hard for people to have pride in their neighborhood when everything's, oh, I'm going to sneeze. Well, also, besides <laughs> pride in your neighborhood, the point of saying <laughs> go out and take a look and pick it up is also then through your own human action, yes. you're actually invested yes. in what is happening and then you're also a little more grounded in the real well, that's what world I, mean. I think I, I totally agree with that and i'm just saying i think sometimes it makes it hard for people to be motivated to do it because they're just like it just all looks like hell so you know like i looked at the pile that builds across the street from my house right and i think it's my turn because the guy down the street does it every we switch on and right. off years but i mean that's like a multi-day project for me to clean out yeah and i'm like and also lots of hands make light work so what we've noticed in the parks that we clean um is there are other people so we started yes. making like collection points so they're sort of like areas where we're like okay dump you know all the dump the guy's sofa and this right. tent and the baby stroller and the like <laughs> half engine and the carburetor and the whatever you just oh and all the orange caps yeah don't even um and you know so we make these collection yeah. things and we've noticed oh there are a couple of other people we Add haven't seen it, right. them but when the pile is getting it, bigger yeah. and that feels really good right because then you feel like oh at least there are other imaginary yeah, fairies yeah. doing and helping and trying to make yeah. our environment, our shared environment, our communities yeah. better. Um, For real, not, not talking and yelling nonsense no, on social no, media no. or in the newspaper. So I saw this yesterday. Actually, I think, yeah, I think I saw this yesterday and it kind of got my irk and always does. Headline, Manchester police officer turns himself in on domestic violence charges. So I, my, my first thought is always, I do think police should have to live to a better, a higher standard. I mean, you are the guys with the guns. You're expected to behave. Oh no, they're held to a lower standard. But they should Tammy. be held to a higher standard. <laughs> no, they're so, legally held I know. to a. But so, I don't think folks back home understand this. We're not even saying, oh, you should be at a higher standard. Maybe you should be on a on par standard. Legally, police yeah, officers are held to a lower legal standard than the rest of us. So. I thought, okay, well, this is pretty crappy that this 28-year-old Manchester police officer is 
I mean, he's been on restricted duty for months. So I was like, so that's costing, like, what, what does that mean, restricted duty, right? Um, he surrendered to police Tuesday after an arrest warrant was issued for multiple counts of domestic violence. So I'm like, okay, so this was investigated. Like, there was a grand jury. They found that there was enough reason for what? Okay, so something happened, right? Um, he was charged with six counts of all these different things. That was bad enough, right? I was like, okay, he's not found guilty yet. The part that I'm like, sorry, dude, you, there's no, you can't talk your way out of this at all. He had been previously arrested, meaning as opposed to yesterday, for violating a domestic violence protective order and placed on restricted duty last month when the department learned of the allegations. Okay. It's one thing for an individual who is not a police officer to maybe not understand that they can't violate a protective order, <laughs> right? It's one thing. It, 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 I don't even think an average person could not understand that this protective order that says you cannot go within so many feet of that person. Right. But I can understand. But when a police officer does right, it. Right, but I mean, I think generally when you're in domestic violence situations and stuff, there's not a lot of rationality and thought and mindfulness going would, into it. Like you are either reacting or you have PTSD or you're, you know, right, so it's like he's not is thinking like, logically. So he's not thinking logically, but he's a police officer. Right. Oh, I so it bothers at, me. At, well, no, of course. <laughs> it does. Um, let me tell you about this. I had a Right to Know New Hampshire uh, board meeting mm -hmm. on Saturday. So Lori Ortolano, who mm -hmm. we've had on the show, uh, maybe if you're traveling yeah, or I'm nope, traveling, yeah. we should have her back. Uh, I invited her for the week you were gone. Yes. But oh, she, she, she had her court case. Yeah. So she had a three-day trial in Nashua where there were five attorneys being paid for by the Nashua City uh, for the different parties on this right to know request that has to do with the art center. So it is fascinating. I don't understand all of it yet, but guys, so if I understand what she was explaining correctly, they basically did a public private. Oh yeah, there was um, an art center. They bought a, a public private thing but they never, uh, they never noticed the meetings. Right. They never uh, got the public's buy-in. They never did anything that they were supposed to do. They created uh, like all and these then, shell companies that had, listen to this, the same EIN number, so the same tax number as the city. They had the same boards of directors. They had the same lawyers. They had the same address set up. But then the city tried to make this argument of, oh, no, those have nothing to do with this, right? So they've basically now been caught out that they've bonded the city of Nashua for I think it was over $23 million, maybe even $30 million, that was not correctly authorized. Right. And that has put the city in such a serious financial situation that they're not going to be able to bond anything else, which is probably good because that's just a fancy well, name for debt, right? But I mean, if they're going to be in debt, should it be for an art center so or should it be, be for like senior housing? You know, <laughs> I mean, these are the questions, but you can't ask the questions if, if they're not know. actually getting the public's buy in or no, for. No, no, no. Pub, uh, spending of public money. Now, of course, the public-private part is also, this is all like federal money. Yeah, there's always so all this federal money, which is funny money from the money printing that they did under COVID, and you know, people don't like to hear it, but it did happen under Trump, and it was $6 trillion, which is why we are seeing the inflation. And then you look at these things. So this struck me this morning in the newspaper. So I don't know if you saw this one, but it's bid to relax vaccine reporting could cost New Hampshire $27 million. So in case you guys didn't catch that, this article is making the argument that by having less reporting, it's going to cost it's us gonna cost us more. It's going to cost us $30 million. No, it's probably just federal money that we wouldn't get because we're not going to do their stupid. Yes. So that is exactly what it is. You guys heard it here from Pammy, right? <laughs> because it's basically, this is what they do. It's just like they say. It's like blackmail. It's, it's also, it's like when people say, well, there was a reduction in this, and you're like, well, no, it was still an increase. It was just less of an increase, increase than you, we thought. You know, like, that doesn't make it not an increase. Which also is, by the way, terrifying. I saw this chart, right, where they talk about this is discretionary spending yeah. in the federal there's government, like, and then there's this, this is, yeah. automatic spending, which yes. is basically the equivalent of everyone's seen that photo of the the iceberg, right, where yeah. it's a little bit at the top and nine-tenths yeah. is under the water. 
that is what's going on, right? Like these are, no one's talking about the unfunded liabilities no. and all these crazy things. So, um, so this vaccine reporting thing where they're saying, hey, actually we're not going to invade people's privacy. Really, your vaccine status, your vaccine status, my vaccine status has zero to do with, to do with anyone. Right. Like, are you telling everyone what your medical conditions right, are? Right. Like, like what? When did do this I, happen? Does everybody it's know rude. what my vitamin D levels are? Right. <laughs> well, I can assure you 90% of these not, not levels not. Are, are too low, yes. which is why everyone's sick, right? So yeah, so so what struck me in this article though, because you had just said the name of some department and we were like, who are those people APD. even? So l listen to this, was Karen Hebert with the Department of Health and Human Services Division of Economic Stability. And what I was like, HAS service? now has a Department of that. Economic Stability? Like why? WTF is that? <laughs> and <laughs> No, I mean, seriously, it's like, Oh, okay. and, 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 and so these people are, you know, these people are, who, who is <laughs> who this? Are what people? is this? Like, I don't know, kind How of weird. How much money is being spent to figure out that, you know. Commie departments that are just, so here's the magic of what they do. In order for the state to grow, they constantly need a new issue, which is basically how we've gotten to trans rights, to be candid, right? So we're constantly trying to spin up a new issue because they don't solve the problem in the year we're all screaming about a right. problem. We spin up all these things, but then everyone's attention gets diverted to something new so that you can't hold the department accountable for solving the problem they claim right. to solve when they stole your money in order to solve it, right? So it's like a magic trick. Like right, we're just, right. just going to shift it. Constantly and... being diverted. Like, so that is why it's so important for people to go, where is my attention? That's why I get so frustrated when I see the libertarians on, on, in, in the culture wars. Because I'm like, the minute you're on one anchor in the culture wars, you're playing politician's right. game. That is what you're doing. Because you're, you're, you're part of the distraction. Yeah. It's not part of the solution to be yelling at each other about these idiotic things that are now all in the NHGOP platform <laughs> this season. Uh, in this season of, you know, political craziness. Um, so this is unrelated, but just I jotted it down. And then I, when you mentioned COVID, I was like, oh, I wanted to say this. So, okay, what is with the car accidents? Have you, is it not nuts? Are you all not noticing that every day there's an upside down car in on, in your Facebook feed? And they're always in, like, <laughs> they're not even places. Okay, did you see the footage of the the smoke shop there? Uh, well, that crashed yeah. through the window. How I, in the heck did that person, they had to have been coming down Granite, Granite Street, Street, Street and just way. not and have I'm, taken the turn or <laughs> had been driving into the parking lot and no, just. No, because it came down like the from like from your down and I'm like how do you turn and take out the front I, of the building I don't know I that, did see that that's not you going five miles an hour you're no like, it's significant like, damage right so I was like that one was there then there was um yesterday there was um an accident that shut down I-93 I don't remember where somewhere around here right I think closer to Bedford uh, there was a two car accident. Then today I see there's another, they closed down I-93 north of Manchester on the southbound completely. Like literally you can, they put don't, because somebody went flying into the woods in their car and you're like, what is wrong with people? So yesterday I'm in Lowe's buying some, you know, used thing I don't need. And um, I'm checking out in this, I had this very long box. And so it was kind of leaning, it wasn't a big deal. And I'm swiping or whatever. And the woman behind me's got a big cart. And instead of just saying, you know, excuse me, I can't, can I get by? I forget what she said, but the cashier looked at me like, what is wrong with people? And I just moved my stuff and I thought, wow, like where, what is everybody's problem? And the, the cashier looks at me and she goes, it's never been the same since COVID. And then the other cashier got involved and she goes, it's just COVID. Ever since COVID, people don't have any patience. They don't. They can't. Well, I mean, my theory is that they're actually th with dysregulated immune systems, which is what happens when you dysregulate people's <laughs> immune systems. Woo. -woo. I, I, I mean, I think inflammation is also in your brain. Yes. Which means that, like, if you're inflamed, if you have something autoimmune going on, which probably, I don't know, most people yeah. currently do. Um, 
I, I mean, I honestly think because, and, and the reason I say that is because I healed myself right. and I used to feel like that. And right. I know what that feeling is. I don't feel like that anymore. No, and I, I see it. I just, I thought, and we noticed this when we were on vacation, we were walking down the street. Yeah, you know, you're walking and somebody behind you wants to go. And I forget what it was. Somebody like blew past us and my brain went like, what the heck? And then every person around me was like, what the heck? And I was like, you know, because she's got to get to the corner a half a second faster than she was. Like, what is up with people? Right, but it's also maybe maybe the part where we can do your own bit is just be like, okay, so I'm just not going to react. I mean, I find I know, myself. I but um, I'm just saying, but it is kind of funny but, to I mean, watch people. Like, people can't. You see it, and I think it's contributing to the accidents. People, they go zooming down the road, and you're like, where are you going? There's a stop sign. I mean, I would love way. to see real data out of the insurance industry. Because it's got to be. Some of that is getting fudged now as well because the numbers are, you know, there's a lot of ups. Obfuscation, is that a word? I think it I is. I think so. Something like that. Uh, there's just a lot of obscuring of interesting data points and numbers and stuff. I was just watching things out of the UK because sometimes it's good for people to, if you hear the story from a different location, mm -hmm. people are sometimes more um, open to hearing it's not it here. there it's not than right. here by way of example. Um, I was actually kind of shocked, and I don't mean this as partisan this because I don't usually play that way. I just just Biden and Trump, right? Um, but the photos and the video I saw coming out of Congress with all the Democrats waving, waving the, Ukrainian the Ukrainian flag. Massive. So two things. Thomas Massey, I don't know if he took the video because that might not be allowed, but let's say he's he shared fined. the video. So he's getting fined $500 yeah, for by sharing it. By, by, by the sergeant of arms, like who gave them and, authority? Well, that and also like I see a lot of videos yeah. coming out of there. Yeah. And are those people getting fined? Because otherwise, you know, part of the frustration people feel is there's this arbitrariness, yes. uh, which means once it's arbitrary, you don't have rule of law, right? So anyway, so the Ukraine with their flags. And so I saw it and someone had made a meme and they said insurrection. And I was like, okay, that's kind of funny. I'm going to share this one. So I shared it and I said, technically, um, you know, this kind of sort of is True, right? F waving the flag oh, of a foreign country. country in Congress seems it's a little off. borderline treasonous. Then I thought I'd do a deep dive. So then I started asking Grok, right? right? Like whatever. And it is, it is murky. Uh, but I think there is a compelling argument. Let's say Republicans had right. waved, I don't know, the Ukrainian flag oh. just to keep all things equal. In it Congress, would have been all over the place. it would have been like a story, right? Also, all the girls again, wearing the white jackets arbitrary, would have been upset. right? <laughs> so then, one of the questions I asked Grok was, I said, "Would it be treason if uh, members of the British Parliament waved American flags in Parliament?" Right. So back to this Fair. idea of let me ask a question in a different locale yeah. so that people can be like, "What?" And Grok was pretty much like, yeah, that would like be really like it's close like, to so treason and that? it's kind of a fine line, but geez, that seems really, really bad. And it's right? like, so wait, why is that any different? So, so. I mean, first of all, the fact that there were Congress people cheering it's that a, we're so, funding a war is just. I mean, all of it is just nasty. And everyone, I mean, honestly, let's stop the cognitive dissonance. I think anyone in their hearts knows war is bad. Like, who wins out of war right. other than the defense military, contractors right. and the sick Congress critters who fund them? The literal, I'm sorry, war pigs in Congress. Fair. And Every human on earth pretty much knows it is not a good deal for the rest of us, right? So it's like, how does this perpetuate? How does this happen? How does it carry on? And it's greed. And you won't, well, yeah. because these people uh, so are making I, millions of I did dollars. hear something today, and it doesn't matter where it came from because you don't like them. But, <laughs> <laughs> but they were talking about when things change. Like, when does a controversy end? When does, when will we stop fighting over whether it's Gaza or is, Israel? Never. When, it's no, part of the no, destruction. Like, the per, this person said, when it's no longer 
there's, about uh, when the money's not yes. there, when there's no money attached. All the things perpetuate right. as long as there's money attached yes. to them. You know, the the transgender movement or homelessness issues. All of these things are because there's money Which, there. Which, you know, is a basic Roman Dutch law principle or a stoic from the Greeks. You know, principle is who benefits, Who's like Kibono, right? What, like, follow the money. Yeah, and you usually can go, mm. And so what happened when we killed the fourth estate, when we actually killed, and there is good media, and people have to stop saying this nonsense about, like, the press is all evil. They're not. And the people saying anything that's ever, always, all, right, right. never, any of these, like, deep qualifiers that don't leave any room, is nonsense. Right. Like that's not how the world did, works. Did you read the article um, from the guy uh, from NPR? Yeah, about the about, banned books or no? No, he, there was an article I read. I didn't read all of it because I, you know, I get oh, bored with easy. the trans about debate? how he um, he used pronouns. No, no. he was. So um, there's a there is a massive hit. Like there's a big hit coming out against Edel Blue. I've probably seen four. Five articles in the last two days on NHPR about him, including the banned book stuff. By the way, folks, books are not getting banned no, in New anywhere, Hampshire. No. So and, go and, ahead. And the, <laughs> this NPR article was from a, 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 like the business correspondent or the business editor or something, and he was saying how... Oh, how, how when NPR lost their way, that NPR used oh, to be the that, news. They yes. used to be the news that if you were objective, you could listen to, which we did. Which Dan I and did. I always listened I to always NPR. Always listened to and NPR. You'd, hear, and you'd be like, that's interesting. I never really thought about that. Right. Or oh, that's interesting. They did a good take on that or whatever. And then they were saying how they got COVID wrong and they got the, the Hunter Biden laptop wrong and they got the Russian collusion wrong and they won't admit that they're wrong and they just keep buckling down on things that aren't accurate. And that's just losing, I mean, fine, th that's where the money will go because their backers will start going, oh, well, I don't know. Well, honestly, I think that at this stage, the, the mainstream press is predominantly just Pravda, right? Right. But there are individual reporters yes. who yeah. are curious and who understand and who do want to get to answers and do want to figure things out. And if we want a functioning society, we do need the truth tellers and the truth yep. seekers. Yep. And the part that is important is we have destroyed the notion of follow the money yep. as a tool to hold people accountable because uh, it's become too hard. And so... In order to reform, if we're saying the way you change things is you know who's funding what right. so that you can see who's being shady, Zuckerberg, um, during the last election, yeah. by way of example, hundreds of oh, millions of NPR dollars. Article, they were saying how they, were, they weren't running stories, stories because they thought it could help Trump. And, and I thought, that's not news. It's, well, it's not news, but it's certainly not national public right. radio right. news, right. right? Like, it's actually, it's it's... It's honest. Yes. And they had an opportunity. NPR had an opportunity to say, Mia culpa, our yes. bad, we're going to yep. do better. And they Instead, don't. they forced that guy out. Right. So there you have it. Anyways, um, <laughs> so that's that. So I hope we see some of you at the uh, Piscataqua River Park on Saturday for the cleanup. That would be great. Um, if you go to the taco tour next week, um, by all means, have fun. We'll, we'll tape it before that. But... Um, Get out there, uh, leaf pickup, your trash, your yard waste pickup has started back up. So every week you can put um, bagged leaves at the, out with your trash and they will pick them up. So it can make your yard pretty too. Do it. Anyways, that's what I got. Thanks guys. Bye. Bye.